What's up, y'all? We coming at you today with the third and final day on the If I Could Only Have Three Guns Challenge. Uh, this little challenge was set out by Hamilton Outdoors. Uh, he's got a YouTube channel over there. Y'all definitely go check him out. Uh, obviously, he's been doing this challenge and several other people. So if y'all follow that hashtag, if I could only have three guns, you'll see some other people who have been doing this challenge as well. Everybody's got some definitely some good reasons and some good ideas of why they're picking what they're picking. So it's definitely interesting um, to see what all everybody else picks and what they prioritize. But um, if y'all hadn't been checking these out, this is the third part. Like I say, there's two more parts. I'll leave some links up above and at the end so y'all can check them out if you're interested. Uh, but basically what this boils down to is this is just a little challenge that uh, Hamilton set out for fun. Uh, it's nothing real serious. Everybody's got different opinions. And basically there's a scenario where for whatever the reason, uh, you can only have three guns. And those three guns have to consist of one shotgun, one rifle, and one handgun. Uh, so we've already done the shotgun and rifle one, and now we're down to the handguns. Now, and I'm saying handguns, and I mean handguns, not pistols now. So don't be trying to sneak in no AR pistols, because believe me, if it was pistols, you'd see some AR pistols laying here. So handgun, handgun is what we're talking about here. Um, but my scenario, everybody's been coming up with kind of different scenarios and why, you know, there's a lot of different ones out there. My scenario basically revolves around uh, uh, end of the world type situation. You're talking Walking Dead, Mad Max, uh, all infrastructure's gone, all utilities. There's no utilities. There's no infrastructure. Commerce is gone. There is no stores. You, you know, Walking Dead type, Walking Dead style, Mad Max kind of thing going on here. Now, uh, Boomstick brought up some great examples in his of, you know, he wouldn't bug out. And, and perfectly honest with you, I wouldn't either. And I've had people with some concerns about the weight I would be carrying. And the weight's not that big of a concern to me because I'm not bugging out. Um, I'm staying at my home base because I've got a setup where I don't have to go anywhere for quite some time. Uh, but eventually, you're going to have to go out roaming and things like that. So that's more what I'm gearing my picks around for, uh, is going out roaming, having to scavenge, having to compete with other people, possibly larger groups out scavenging, larger groups trying to do you harm and your yourself or your group or your family harm. That's what I'm gearing my choices towards. So with that being said, let's get along in this. Let's get to the handgun. So as you can see, I got a few different handguns set out here. I don't have all of my own, but for sure, it'd take me, it'd take me all day to do the video uh but i said because some of them i discount completely also you know my 22s those those are just completely discounted not that i don't think 22s got its use uh but for me in this situation it's just there's there's no question that that doesn't have a place in this situation not a 22 handgun for sure um so i got a few examples here that i actually considered and that's what we're looking at today so uh, obviously, if y'all watch my videos, y'all know I'm a much bigger fan of semi-autos than I am the revolvers. I do like revolvers, not no, not that I don't like them, but I'm a much bigger fan of semi-autos. So obviously, that's what we got here. And you probably already know the, the choice I'm going to have, but I'm going to start knocking them out anyway. So let's start with the revolvers over here. First, we'll start with the big boy. I know a lot of people have picked a pretty, pretty good size revolver or revolvers in general. Um, and, and my thought, if I'm going to pick a revolver, it's going to be the big boy. Uh, I'm going to throw the 44 Magnum in there. Uh, 44 Magnum, obviously, huge old honking round that's going to get the job done from a bad guy all the way up to a bear. I mean, you don't have to worry about being underpowered by any means as far as the, the size of the round and the firepower of a 44 Magnum. So just a little 44 Magnum, five shot, which is one of the drawbacks on it. You got five shots in this cylinder. So obviously the positives are... Uh, Huge stopping power, huge stopping power. If you actually hit the target with this, it's going to stop. I mean, there's no question. You're going to stop the threat with this. Uh, this this particular gun, a little tar tracker here. I got some aftermarket hoe grips. This gun shoots excellent. Uh, it's a ported barrel, a very nice shooting gun, really mild recoil for what you're shooting out of this thing. Uh, but here's where it gets knocked out. Uh, number one is the capacity on this gun. It's a five shot cylinder. Uh, and, and, you know, I'm not, and I'm not looking at this in a home defense or, or personal defense, self-defense situation where the average rounds used are three rounds. I'm not looking at self-defense and, and just needing three rounds. I'm needing a lot of rounds because there's no telling what you're going to run into and how many people you're going to run into under what situation in the scenario that I'm talking about. 
uh, five rounds ain't gonna cut it. And, and not only that, but the reload speed after I expend these five rounds is incredibly slow. I don't care if you got uh, strips, if you got the, the circle fast reloaders, speed loaders, the speed strips, it's still just incredibly slow. And it, it, that's just a fact with these revolvers. Um, so for that reason, those reasons, basically, this gets knocked out. And, and also, I'll throw in there the availability of ammo. So you're going to have a hard time. And I'm discounting reloading because supplies are finite, like I say. And, and reloading's only going to go as far as the ammo's going to go, basically. So uh, you're going to be looking at scavenging, bartering, whatever you can do. 44 Magnum is just not it. Uh, the availability of that ammo is just not enough for me. And the main reasons are the capacity and the speed of reload. It's just not it. So. 44 magnums got to go as much as I enjoy shooting that got to get out of here now Let's go on to the next revolver So now we're looking at a little smaller 357 38 now the advantages of something like this is you'll you'll be able to shoot two different calibers So 357 or the 38 special out of it. So uh, this one also it's a six shot revolver So you got six shots. The problem is again. That's not enough. That's just not enough uh, now if, if, if you're under stress if you're outnumbered six shots is not going to do it it's just not going to do it in the situations that i'm basing my picks on uh, and again the reload speed so so for basically the same reasons as the 44 magnum revolver is going this revolver is going and so would any other revolver for me just personally in the situation i'm looking at and the same with the ammo now these, these rounds aren't the rarest again uh, but they're certainly far from the most abundant rounds out there so this one's got to go as well. Another another revolver bites the dust. So we got that one gone. Now, now it starts to get really, really tough for me. But the next one, as much as I hate to say it, and some people's gonna, gonna get all over me for this, uh, the 1911 45 ACP is gonna be the next on the chopping block. Now, obviously there's a lot of positives about a 1911 1911s are a great firearm they're extremely dependable they're very very accurate very very capable the capacity is starting to get a little better but still on your 1911s now unless you're talking about the new gucci 2011s with the double stacks you're still limited to seven or eight rounds this one happens to have eight round in the magazine so eight plus one you're looking at nine rounds uh, that, that's getting better, but to me, that's still not where I would be comfortable in a type of situation like I'm describing. Um, some of the other pluses of a 1911, again, they're out there in the wild like crazy. T tons and tons of 1911s out there, so you, you probably have a lot better luck finding parts for it, uh, making your own parts because they're so familiar and other people could make parts if you couldn't. Uh, the 45 caliber round, a very potent round, uh, but it could be argued that it's uh, rivaled now by smaller cartridges because of the design and because of the, the advancement in different ammunition. Uh, there's still no doubt about it. This is a heck of a round. A 45 ACP is a nasty round. Uh, but it's not rare, but it's also not as abundant as some of my other picks. So for that reason, uh, that's why I'm getting rid of the 45 ACP 1911 a little bit too small of a capacity for what I'm wanting to do uh, And the availability of the ammunition is just not going to be quite as widespread as my ultimate choice so 1911 has got to go to the side. So we got to put that one to the side now We're coming down to two different ones and y'all can probably already guess and y'all probably already knew from the start Which one the choice is gonna be so let's start out with the the last one. It's not gonna be uh, the Glock 20 10 millimeter this one hurt me bad to knock this out because i absolutely love this gun i love this gun i love this caliber of ammunition this is an excellent 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 handgun for me um first off the glock 20 uh 10 millimeter but the glock in general uh glocks are out there in the wild like crazy now you got some people who hate look hate glocks some people who love glocks but I'm not in, in either camp. I, I actually, I like Glocks. I think Glocks are a great firearm, but I'm not a, a diehard Glock fanboy or a Glock hater. Uh, but I can appreciate it. And I'm honest enough to be able to appreciate what a Glock brings to the table. And basically what a Glock brings to the table is uh, wide, wide availability of the firearms themselves. Extremely, extremely 
huge abundance of parts for these weapons. Uh, the interchangeability of them. There are not only Glock branded parts, but there are thousands and thousands, hundreds of thousands of individual parts all across this country, I can promise you. Uh, in my house alone, I've got enough Glock parts to put together about 20 Glocks right now at the, at the drop of a hat. And that's just me, and I'm not near as much of a fanatic as some people. Parts would be extremely fine for this if you needed parts because a Gen 3 Glock or a Gen 4 or even a Gen 5s, uh, these Glocks just run. These Glocks are incredibly dependable. And then this particular one, uh, it just happens to be 10 millimeter. 10 millimeters incredible round. You've got 15 rounds plus one. So a 16 round of 10 millimeter in your hand of a very, very potent round right here. Very potent round. Um, now it can be argued that without the right 10 millimeter ammo, uh, it's not that big of an upgrade from a, a nine or a 40. Uh, it's just not. And I totally agree with that. You, it's definitely very dependent on the ammo type out of these 10 millimeters. I can tell you that from experience. It just really is. Uh, but that being said, all the good things about this Glock, I'm knocking this Glock out, the 10 millimeter version, simply because of the ammunition, uh, the ammo availability on this. 10 millimeter has is, is gotten way, way pop, way more popular these days, but it's in no way near, not even close to as abundant as the nine millimeter. It's just not, I mean, that, that can't even be argued. It's a very, very potent round, but the availability and, and able, being able to go out there and scavenge it or barter for it, no, nowhere near as many people are gonna be able to have a hold of this 10 millimeter as they do the nine. So for that and that reason and that reason only, uh, I'm getting rid of the 10 millimeter as much as I hate to. I mean, that, that really pains me. I just want to make that clear. That really pains me. And that was very tough to knock the 10 millimeter out because I love that 10 millimeter. So here we go. We're at the end and we, we got, we're down to basically one choice. These are the nine millimeter. And I just brought these out for some examples. Uh, I'll start with the P365 and this gun is hot and so is this one too. So we're just going, I ain't going to manipulate it a whole lot, but we're being safe with it as always. So, uh, the P365, y'all probably know this is my everyday carry. This is an excellent firearm. This little gun has a 12 round capacity in that magazine plus one in a chamber. You've got 13 rounds in this little gun right here. Uh, very nice night sights. Uh, the biggest benefit of this P365 is the concealability. And that being said, that's the reason this, this basically gets knocked out. It wasn't even really a question, I'll be honest with you, because uh, I love this gun, but this gun is far from my favorite 9mm. It's my favorite EDC concealed carry gun by far, but it's nowhere near my favorite nine millimeter. It's, it's a great gun. It shoots great. It's very reliable, very dependable, uh, but there are much better options if I'm not worried about concealability and I'm not worried about concealability in this situation. And as far as the weight, uh, this is heavier than, than some of these other two, to be honest with you. This is not a light little pistol by any means. It's, it's, <laughs> Contrary to the size of it, it's not light. So for that reason, this is getting knocked out. I don't need concealability, uh, so so this one's got to go for sure. So that one's out of here, the 365. Now, what we got left with is basically one here, and I'm gonna put this over here because I want to show you some some just some uh, points I'm gonna make about this. So that, all that being said, we come to the end. This would be my handgun of choice uh, if I could only have one handgun in the scenarios I'm talking about. This is a Poly 80. Uh, for all intents and purposes, for those of y'all who had never messed with Poly 80s, this is a Glock 17. This this is a Glock, basically a Glock 17, Gen 3 Glock 17. Um, and that's the reason I've got these out here. This is a Glock 17. Uh, now this is a Gen 1, so it's gonna be a little different, but uh, some of the things on this are, is gonna be just like a Glock 17 Gen 3. So. Uh, the reason I'm picking the Glock, first of all, and the Glock 17 is things I've already mentioned before on this 10 millimeter. The abundance of parts, the abundance of guns out there, the extreme abundance of aftermarket parts, OEM parts. Uh, this entire firearm is made up of internally 100% OEM Glock parts. Externally, these are all aftermarket Glock Gen 3 parts. Uh, the frame is, it's a Poly 80 frame, a Glock magazines. Uh, it's completely Glock. I could take and, and swap these slides out. I could put this slide on this right now, put this slide on this right now. For all intents and purposes, a Poly 80 is a Glock 17, uh, the full size one. This, is, this would be the Glock 17 equivalent. Now, 
You might ask yourself why then wouldn't I just go with the OEM Glock? Uh, because the benefit of the Poly 80s is, you know, everybody thinks about it as uh, you just want the Poly 80s so you don't have a serial number, and that's absolutely not true. Uh, now, some people may want it because of that, but in my case, that's not true at all. Now, is that an uh, added benefit? Of course. Now, in this situation, it wouldn't matter. Uh, but that's not why I love these Poly 80s, and I have several of these Poly 80s. Uh, the reason I love these Poly 80s is it's basically a Glock, but the way a Glock should have been made. And what I mean by that is, now Glocks have made advances since the Gen 3 and they've fixed a few little things, but they're still nowhere close to this. Um, first off, some of the differences in this, uh, the frame obviously is aftermarket frame, and that's where a lot of your differences come in, and they're, mo they're mostly ergonomic type differences. Uh, the grip angle, for one, is absolutely huge. It, it's phenomenal on these poly 80s you got more of a 1911 style grip angle versus the glock now a glock's not bad i love oem glocks and i shoot glocks and they feel fine but this takes it from feeling fine to feeling excellent uh the grip angle is just excellent on these guns it's hard to describe it unless you hold one in your hand uh the grip texturing is absolutely excellent on these guns now this is a this is a gen 1 glock 17 this is the p80 it's a glock 17 gen 1 but so it's, it's pretty slick, but your Gen 4s and your Gen 3s are more similar to something like this. This is the Gen 4. Uh, the Gen 3, I think, didn't have the finger grooves, or maybe it did, but more, more of a texture like this. But uh, anyway, th this is way above and beyond, way, way, way better. Uh, the undercut on the trigger guard is another huge thing. I've got big hands. My knuckle almost always sits under that trigger guard. Huge difference in the trigger guard on these, as you can see. I mean, just a wimpy little trigger guard, totally wimpy little trigger guard undercut on these on these uh, Glocks, the OEM Glocks. This makes it way better, way way better. The beaver tail on the back, much nicer beaver tail than your standard three uh, Gen three Glock. Uh, now, granted, in the Gen fours and up, they've added the back straps, which you can put the extended beaver tails. But you know, this was built on the Gen three, so huge improvement there. Your rail system on the front, uh, Glocks have that really. Uh, proprietary type of rail system on the front the poly 80 has a standard 1913 picatinny type rail on the front so way more versatile in that regard uh, just a better all overall design and still and still keeping the glock functionality the glock parts and, and the glock reliability and just running uh, it's just the way it is so that's why i went with the poly 80 over an oem glock uh, now this particular one, I've got extended control, extended mag release, extended slide lock, extended slide release. Uh, I've got a TRL-7 uh, weapon light on the front of it. So got it pretty decked out. It's got tritium night sights on it. Um, again, huge capacity, 17 round capacity in this gun in the Glock 17 versus the 15 of the 20. So 17 plus one. And if you get, if things get really crazy, uh, everybody knows you break out the 33 round Glocklet bar. So you're talking about extremely nice capacity, extremely fast reload on this weapon. Um, I just love these guns. I absolutely love these guns. So for all of those reasons, this is my pick for the handgun if I could only have one handgun. So there you go, y'all. That wraps up the If I Could Only Have Three Guns Challenge. So we got one shotgun, one rifle, one handgun. And to, to, just for a recap, obviously the shotgun was the Maverick 88. The rifle was the AR-14, chambered in 5.56. And then the handgun, of course, today's gun was the Poly 80, AKA the Glock 17. So there's the three guns I would pick if I could only have three. I feel like these three right here would get me out of pretty much any situation uh, that I would find myself in and they do it well. So uh, if y'all enjoy this video and enjoyed these little this little series here, hit that thumbs up. I had fun doing it. Like I said, uh, this is the end of this one, but we getting ready to roll on with our normal videos. Don't y'all worry about that. Tomorrow's ammo hunt's coming. Then we're going to be rolling out the normal stuff after that, just like we always have. So y'all definitely stay tuned. Make sure you subscribe down below so you can see when I upload those videos. A big thanks again to Hamilton Outdoors for coming up with this little challenge. It was a nice change of pace, so I really appreciate that. Y'all go check out his channel and some of the other people who've done this challenge so check out what their picks are and see what you think about them everybody's got some really good picks uh, and really valid reasons for choosing what they have chosen so y'all go check those out also so uh, check out my amazon affiliate store link in the description like i always ask you i know uh, but if you shop
through Amazon anyway, go through that link. Even if you don't buy what's there, if you buy anything, we get a little kickback from the channel and it does help a little bit. So I greatly appreciate that. Uh, but again, thumbs up, hit the subscribe, stay tuned for more stuff. And in the meantime, stay safe, stay prepared, and I'll see y'all soon.